Welcome back to another FPL video. This will be the transfer tips for Game Week 14. I'll be talking about 10 players to buy, hold, sell, and skip. And we have some big injuries to discuss, such as Eze, Watkins, and Jarrah Bowen heading into this deadline. Be sure to tune in for the deadline stream tomorrow at 9 a.m. UK time. And we'll be streaming up until the deadline passes around 11 a.m. So be sure not to miss that by subscribing to the channel and smashing the like button. If this video gets to over 200 likes, then there's going to be even more content throughout the weekend, the deadline stream on Saturday, and also the reaction stream on the Sunday. But without further ado, let's jump straight into this video. As I discussed last week, Imbumo is a buy, and the best time to purchase him is in Gemic 14. He does blank in Gemic 18. There could be a double Gemic in 20, which hasn't been confirmed yet. And in Gemic 21, he will be headed off to the African Cup of Nations. Same with other players like Salah. But in the meantime, from Gemic 14 to 21, I think Imbumo is arguably the best midfielder in the game with the exception of Mohamed Salah. He's got terrific underlying numbers. He's only 7 million. His ownership will reach 30% by the Gemic 14 deadline. He's got six goals, three assists, an XGI figure of over 11. He had a really good shot, clear off the line by Declan Rice after Aaron Ramsdale howler. And I also think Mbumo in any game is threatening. He was quite anonymous in that match, but still had that one big chance. And he's getting the bulk of those huge opportunities with Ivan Tony still suspended suspended up until January. He's also got 76 FPL points. You're not going to find much better anywhere else in the midfield. With those fixtures, especially Luton Town at home and Sheffield United away in the next three, I think Mbumo is an easy buy. I'm usually quite cold on Isak, but with Callum Wilson out, potentially up until Blank Gemic 18, and with these fixtures for Newcastle, I think Isak is a buy. This is the best time to purchase the Swedish international. Even Man United at home and Tottenham away, those are good fixtures there for the tune, and I think Isak could get goals in those tougher matches, as well as the easier ones you see marked in green by the fixture difficulty rating. He's priced at 7.4 million. His ownership is 12.5%, so he's not a mega differential, but he's also not a 10 template pick so any returns he will provide you will also gain you quite a lot of rank seven goals this season he also has an xg of 6.08 a lot of big chances so far over 10 and he's got 52 fpl points he's also a bonus points magnet and the only reason his fpl points are quite low is because he's been sharing the minutes with callum wilson and he's also been injured in a few games this season so for me isak is a buy and apart from haaland you could argue that isak is the best forward in the game right now. It's rare for me to include goalkeepers in the buy section of a Transtips video, but I think David Raya is a fantastic long-term option. And as you can see, there are only 12 saves he has made so far. And Arsenal have considered the fewest shots on target of any Premier League club. They've got the best defensive numbers. So with David Raya, it could be a bit of an Edison situation where you're heavily relying on clean sheets. You might not get many bonus points or saves, but I think David Raya can be a steady Eddie, get six points week in, week out. And of course, it's impossible for any team or any goalkeeper option to give you those clean sheet points every single game week. But I think David Raya can get more than most, and I would back Arsenal to be in the top two for least goals conceded and also for the Golden Glove race. I think David Raya can keep two clean sheets over the next five. And then beyond that, he's also got some fantastic fixtures where I'd back Arsenal to keep even more clean sheets. He's priced at 4.9 million. He is a mega differential here at 4.5% ownership, four clean sheets so far. And he has missed a lot of matches. Ramsdale started the season. And of course, in Gemic 13, Raya couldn't play against Brentford. He's also got an expected goals conceded figure of 5.82 and 35 FPL points. So I think David Raya will be right up there in terms of points scored amongst goalkeepers by the end of the season. He's the undisputed number one. And in recent games, he has been quite composed and calm and he's been quite solid and assured. And that also helps the Arsenal defence to be a very solid unit and also give a better chance of keeping clean sheets. The Jared Bowen situation is a bit rare because he's an option that a lot of us would love to have in the long term. He's got great fixtures. He's been very consistent this season. Decent underlying numbers. As you can see, there are 10 big chances. He's also quite cheap, or at least he offers great value for money at 7.6 million. But his ownership is going down and down. Over 400,000 FPL managers have transferred him out. The most of any player so far this week. 
And it's a shame because I think Boeing could be fantastic in this Christmas period, but he still is a doubt for Gemic 14. He wasn't in the Europa League squad yesterday on Thursday. And let's wait and see what the latest updates are. But David Moyes doesn't tend to give much information away. And in his press conference in the afternoon later today, I'm not so sure if he's going to give us the news we're hoping for. But in the rare case that he does, I think Jared Bowen is a hold. So if David Moyes says that Bowen is available, he's clear and ready to play, then he is a definite hold, Jared Bowen. But if there is still some doubt, you could make a case for selling Jared Bowen. Let me know down in the comment section below what you're looking to do. Most people I've seen in the comment section, in the live streams, have said that they're selling Bowen and the easy transfer this week would be Bowen to Mbumo. And I think that makes complete sense. But ideally, I would have both of them in the same team as discussed in the best wildcard team video be sure to check it out a lot of in the know so to speak and reliable sources are suggesting that west ham are quite optimistic that bone will be available for the crystal palace game but he hasn't trained so far this week and that is a mega concern in terms of my gut feeling i think bone will be available i would hold on to him but if David Moyes doesn't really give much away and Bowen is still a doubt for Gemic 14, I'm afraid this hold could turn into a sell. Ollie Watkins was not in the squad yesterday for the Europa Conference League and Unai Emery provided the following update. He said on Ollie Watkins, he was not available today. He felt something yesterday. I don't think it's important, but we decided not to take the risk. Second, we wanted minutes for John Duran. And he says he's unsure if Watkins will be fit for Bournemouth, but hopefully he will be. So it's not looking too good for Ollie Watkins. I personally think he will be available. I'm much more confident on Watkins than I would be on Jared Bowen. Hence why Bowen is currently at 50% chance of playing and Watkins is at 75%. And even with those tougher fixtures like Manchester City and Arsenal back to back, I would still back Aston Villa to score some goals in those matches and for Ollie Watkins to be heavily involved. Then you've got Brentford away, his former club, and Sheffield United at home in game week 18 that blank game week where a lot of us might be looking to sell Manchester City and Brentford assets so I think Watkins could be crucial in this Christmas period even if he does miss out against Bournemouth he should be back very soon the fixtures aren't great in the immediate short term but Watkins is fixture proof and he can do it against absolutely anybody especially at Villa Park where Aston Villa have been imperious so far this season so for me Watkins is a hold I don't mind the switch to Isak up until gimmick 18 but I still think Watkins could outscore Isak in this period. He's 8.5 million. His ownership hasn't gone down much since the news broke out about Watkins' potential injury. Seven goals, eight assists, 15 big chances, 85 FPL points. You can't get much better than that anywhere else. So for me, Ollie Watkins is a hold. I discussed Huming Son last week. I'm going to reiterate what I said, but things have changed slightly. There is a caveat as well to this hold. I think if you're looking to buy Mbumo, Saka or Salah, and the only way you can do so is by selling Son, then I would go ahead and do that. But apart from those three midfielders, I don't think I'd sell Son to anyone else at this moment in time because even Jared Bowen, he's an injury doubt. He's not someone you'd want to buy in at this stage, especially with all the doubts that are surrounding him. And then I look at the other midfielders, even Gordon, Palmer, and all these exciting assets. I still think Son is a better FPL option in isolation. Of course, value has to be taken into account. What are you going to do with the extra millions? But I think Son is a hold in most circumstances. But in terms of midfielder ranking, I would put those three of Mbumo, Saka and Salah just ahead of Son at this moment in time. But Spurs have some good long-term fixtures. Son is priced at 9.6 million. He has gone down recently. His ownership is also dropping slightly to 38.4%. Eight goals, one assist, a decent XGI of 7.35 and other decent underlying numbers such as shot volume and also big chances, 84 FPL points. And even against Man City and Newcastle, Son is the most dangerous Spurs player that they have offensively. And then you look at the other games in between. West Ham, Nottingham Forest and Everton and especially that Everton game I think Spurs could do pretty well and Son has a good record against them so for me Huming Son is a hold but as I mentioned earlier it is also with a caveat and I think Mbumo, Saka and Salah are even better FPL options. There was an update on Eze earlier in the week and it's not boding well for Crystal Palace. He got injured during the Luton Town game and it looks like he's going to miss the West Ham and Bournemouth matches as well. A lot of FPL managers bought Eze 
all those free fixtures, Luton Town, West Ham and Bournemouth, I thought was a good short-term punt. And it's also a degree of bad luck there. So unfortunately, it looks like Eze is a very easy sell. And if you don't have Mbumo already and have the funds to go to him, I think Eze to Mbumo is a no-brainer transfer. And it's also an upgrade regardless. So I would go ahead and make that move. Eze to Mbumo if possible. If you're not able to afford it though, then I would definitely recommend Gordon or Palmer. I think you're in a good position there if you have Eze anyway. It's not ideal, but you can go to one of those three midfielders and you'll be set in the long term. So unfortunately, Eze is out for the next couple of weeks, potentially for a month, but there is also a recent report by The Telegraph and it looks like Eze is aiming to be back before Christmas. Let's wait and see if that's the case. But unfortunately, despite Eze obviously showing a lot of potential, he was a good FPL option last season. He's got decent underlying numbers in limited game time. I think he's an easy sell, especially with the long-term fixtures looking pretty poor for the Eagles. The RB scored and was Aston Villa's best player in the Europa Conference League in a 2-1 victory. And I think the RB could be pretty good against Bournemouth. So you don't need to sell him now. You could always delay this move to Gemic 15 when he faces Manchester City and Arsenal back to back. I think that could be the best time to sell him. But I think the RB is a sell if you don't have Bowen and you're also looking to buy in Bumo, you've got the likes of Son, Gordon, Saka and Salah, for example, and you've got Diaby, well, Diaby would be the one to sell from those five for sure. It's all team dependent, of course, and long term, I think Diaby is a sell. It's just a question of whether you do it now or in Gemic 15. Now, my overall preference would be to do in Gemic 15, but I'm also not against doing it in Gemic 14. In my team selection video, I discussed selling Diaby to Mbumo, and I might have to change that because of Bowen's injury doubts, and I'm going to wait and see if David Moyes is honest and provides a concrete update on his fitness. But at the moment, I think Diaby is a sell. It's up to you whether you're doing Gemic 14 or 15. I gave you my thoughts in terms of when I prefer to do it. His ownership is at 14.9%, three goals, six assists. He could be playing as the main striker against Bournemouth. He typically plays alongside Oli Watt, Watkins, but if Watkins misses out, you could see Diaby having the bulk of the chances and that could bode well for him and punish sellers accordingly. But he's got decent underlying numbers, especially for a midfielder at his price. I do prefer Mbumo, Gordon and other midfielders, even Palmer potentially in the long term. But I have to say Diaby is still a decent option. You could make a case for keeping him long term, especially for that blank gimmick in 18 against Sheffield United at home. But in my opinion, Diaby is still closer to a sell than a hold. We are now in the final section, the skips, and Garnacha for me isn't a buy just yet. He's someone to maybe keep an eye on and have on the watch list, but I would not buy him at this moment in time. He scored the goal of the season. It's going to be very difficult to top that. The one he scored against Everton, he followed that up with another goal in the Champions League to put Man United 1-0 ahead against Galatasaray, and his ownership is 1.5%. He's a differential. His XGI is 1.53, 24 FPL points, but the fixtures are poor. I don't see Garnacho making an impact against the likes of Newcastle or Liverpool. Yeah, I think Bournemouth at home could be a good fixture for him and I think Man United will win that game and score a few goals but I'm still not convinced about Garnacho as an FPL option and I'd rather go for five solid midfielders and that includes Palmer or Gordon, Saka, all these names we discussed in the midfield today rather than going for Garnacho and as a result I would skip him. I still don't trust Man United although in recent games they have been attacking well. Six goals in the last two matches across all competitions. It's just their defense and their goalkeeper that's letting them down right now but for me Garnacho is a skip and I wouldn't buy him just yet. The 10th and final player covered today is Levi Colwill. I'm seeing a lot of people asking, should I buy him? And he's going to start against Brighton because Cucurella is suspended. But in the long run, there could be rotation between those two. We've seen in recent weeks that Cucurella has started over Colwill. And apart from that 12-point haul against Fulham, where he got an assist and three bonus points, I think Colwill's been bang average in FPL. And I think in recent weeks, especially since the Tottenham game, he has looked a bit off it. And that's why he has lost his place. Chelsea have good long-term fixtures. I understand why some people want to go for one or two Chelsea players which could be Sterling or Palmer as the attackers and then if not maybe one defensive coverage either Sanchez and goal or Colwell in the defense we can't really trust Reese James because of his fitness issues so I can see why people are looking to do this but I'm not so sure if Colwell will start most games over the Christmas period and I know you might have that defensive depth and you can always rotate but I would rather have nailed on starters and Colwell just isn't that and when he does start he doesn't have 
have much assist threat, goal threat, doesn't get many bonus points in general. So I honestly would skip Carwell as things stand if he can nail down a spot in this Chelsea team as we approach this really good fixture run there for the Blues, then I would reconsider this stance. But as things stand, I would skip Carl Will and go for someone else entirely. So that's it. I've covered 10 players to buy, hold, sell and skip. Let me know if you disagree with any of the selections down in the comment section below. If you agree as well, any thoughts, just leave them down there. And also in the Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, all the links are in the description below. But thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 22,000 subscribers and beyond. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Dylan RCM, and check all the other links in the description below, including Draft Hound, which I discussed in detail in the team selection video. So I'd encourage you to check that out and see what my transfer plans are with two free transfers and a lot of different possibilities at my disposal. I'll be building upon that in the deadline stream on Saturday from 9 a.m. UK time. Be sure not to miss it. I wish you all the best of luck for Gemic 14 and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.